Hi, folks. I'm Johnny Gilbert. Let's just get a few details out of the way before we start our game. In this video, we are going to have a walkthrough on behind the scenes of Jeopardy! 2nd Edition for the PC. So without further ado, let's begin the walkthrough. We have the green room, the control room, production offices, dressing room, stage, take the contestant exam. We're going to start the green room. All right. We have Solely Bring the Mountain to Mohans. That's part of the job. Funny. Nobody ever asks why they call it the green room. And me, a good contestant. We're going to click on all of these to see what they do. Well, what we do is we try to go on the road a lot because we don't want people to have to come to L.A. just to take the test because roughly only about 10 to 15 percent of the people in a room of approximately 75 pass the test. So we try to get to all different areas so that people can come and try out a lot closer than, you know, coming to L.A. Uh, two things. I love the travel. I love being able to travel. And I think meeting so many people from different walks of life. I mean, they come in here uh, when they're taping the show and we have people from all different occupations, um, locales, and you learn a lot about them. You know, it's, it's real interesting to hear them. They ask you all the, the kind of questions. What happens if I sneeze on the air? What happens if I can't get in on the buzzer? I would make a wonderful contestant as far as understanding how to play the game, when to ring in, answering in the form of a question, but giving the right answers, I don't know if I would be nearly as good. Um, that's where I would fall down. And these, are, these clips are played by Suzanne Thurber, a contestant coordinator. Next is the control room. This one is by the director. Kevin McCarthy. How long ago? Love those away games. It's not for the faint of heart, and Alex is the man. I mean, I started on this show uh, so long ago. I was young when I started this on this show, and that was 1984, the first year I was the booth AD, and I edited the first season. And then I went back to Merv Griffin's show, who created it for a year, and then 1986 came back here permanent, and 1991, I think, I started directing, basically from the beginning. You go on the road and you see 4,500 people going crazy for Alex or crazy for a certain contestant. You feel uh, proud of what you're doing. I think the more aggressive you are on this show, the better off you are. You can't wait till the answer pops in your mind. You've got to say, history, I'm good at this. He reads the question, you ring in, and then you've got to have the presence of mind and the coolness to just pull it out of the air, give the answer, and go on to the next one. He loves what he's doing. He's great with the contestants. He calms them down when they need calming down, and, and he gets them a little excited when they need to be excited. He's like an arbitrator out there. He's, he's impartial, but he wants the show to be great every night. Next is the production offices. We have two options. Harry Feeman as the executive producer, and Jim Lyman, Gary Johnson as the writers. We're going to start with Harry Friedman. For Harry Friedman, we have It's All About the Writing, Jeopardy coming soon to an auditorium near you, the host with the most, and to expect the unexpected. The core of Jeopardy is the writing. And fortunately, I have co-producers and head writers, a, a, a wonderful staff of writers and researchers who um, are responsible for the, the heart and soul of the show, which is the game material itself. We've been to New York. We're, uh, we've got other remotes uh, in the works. That seems to have energized the show quite a bit. Alex Trebek brings credibility to the show, not only in the way in which he hosts it, but by virtue of the fact that he cares so much about the integrity of the show and is such a professional that I think that comes through in his performance. That's one of the things we always have to be aware of is that there could be some other answer out there that could be right that we're not aware of even with all the research that we do. We will stop tape, we'll research their answer and just like in baseball well, where all ties go to the runner, in this case, all ties go to the contestant. We're, we're always looking out to, to rule in favor of the contestant whenever possible. 
That's it for Harry Freeman. Now into the writers, Jim Ryan and Gary Johnson. We ha for the writers, we have a Jeopardy's writer's qualifications, my favorite category, parts one and two, and we're taking the dream job. You have to be well-rounded. You have to be interested in a, a wide variety of things, and uh, everything from history to sports to you know what's on today, the cover of today's L.A. Times. I think it was uh, dead celebrities, but they wouldn't let me do that one. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but we'll we'll get that in one day. We had one called um, "Dr. Seuss Meets the Bard," and we had uh, different quotes from Shakespeare as if. Uh, Dr. Seuss had actually written them, and I thought that was quite amusing. Got a lot of laughs, anyway. The best part of my job is that every day is an adventure, and I don't have to join the Navy for it to be an adventure. Everything we do is, uh, is exciting, and anything you're interested in can become material to put in the show. There's not an area we won't go to and be interested in as part of the job. Next is the dressing room. We have the late Alex Trebek. We have, I'm not really one for sitting around. I wish I had a colorful and interesting story about how I got the job. But basically, it goes something like this. Be a typical, be all that you can be and a typical day. And you, if you win a Jeopardy game, you get to see the rest of Alex's interview. I came to the United States in 1973 to host a show called Wizard of Odds, and I've been very fortunate since then to have been gainfully employed most of the time. I had hosted Wheel of Fortune for a period of one week to replace an ailing Chuck Woolery, who was the regular host at that time, and I did that for the Merv Griffin people, and I guess they remembered me, and when they brought back Jeopardy! into syndication in 1984, they called me and said, look, we're going to bring back this old game show called Jeopardy. Would you like to host it? And I said, yeah, sure, it's a great show. My job as the host is to uh, provide an atmosphere in which the contestants can do their very best. It's like that uh, U.S. Army commercial, be all you can be. We want our contestants to be all they can be. We want them to do well. We want them to win a lot of money. Well, I come in early on tape day we usually tape two days a week, and we'll do three weeks on, one week off, that kind of thing. I will start at about 8 o'clock in the morning going over the five games that we will be taping that day. I look at all of the material, all of the clues. If there are words that I'm not familiar with, I look them up in dictionaries. If there are foreign words, I ask our researchers to help me with those. Um, yes. Next, we have the stage. We have two options on this one. We have John L Lauderdale as the stage manager and Johnny Gilbert as the announcer. We're going to start with John Lauderdale. We have, it's who you know, think of me as the crew wrangler, be the buzzer, laid back is good. I met some of the celebrities, including Clint Eastwood and uh, Merv, and uh, from meeting these people, I ended up, uh, expressing an interest that I wanted to come to Hollywood and work. There are certain responsibilities that uh, the stage manager does by making sure all those elements are, are in place, looking at that schedule, and when it comes time to tape a show, make sure that everybody is in its place. And I get on and I, on my headset and I can tell the director, I say, hey, we're ready, let's go. Now, the lockout device can be your best friend or it could be your worst enemy. If it's your best friend, uh, you see that there are people who, uh, who, who operate that, that button with such ease and they uh, manage to get in all the time. The more relaxed a person is on stage, the better they seem to do out there. Now for Johnny Gilbert, we have the hardest working man in show business. The secret to Johnny's golden vocal cords revealed here for the very first time. It only seems I've worked on very successful game show ever made. Those darn computers are everywhere. My career in show business started uh, a long time ago when I was about 17. Started out as a uh, singer, professional singer, and traveled for years with that. Uh, then I did a stint in the Army uh, and special services, and uh, that was also in show business. And then I went to New York in 1960 and been doing television ever since. I worked as a professional singer for several years and 
That helped me an awful lot, by the way, in television because I studied with a uh, classical singing uh, teacher and that helped me with the breathing and how to use the voice. And so I did The Price is Right with Bill Cullen uh, and did uh, several different shows there, one with Burt Parks, then uh, called Yours for a Song, uh, and then I worked with Dick Clark on the $25,000 Pyramid, John Davidson on the $100,000 Pyramid, did the Dinah Shore program for eight years, with, and of course uh, Circus of the Stars and People's Choice Awards, and I've been doing a show for the last several years that the kids really love called Supermarket Sweep, uh, along with Jeopardy. Uh, the original Jeopardy, for instance, they had people standing behind the board raising cards to reveal uh, the responses. And now we have about nine different computer systems that run the show. And the final option is take the contestant exam Hello, where and you I'm Alex take Trebek, a test. And I want to welcome you to the Jeopardy take a test on exam. Being a now, in some ways, contestant. this is tougher than the actual show because there are 50 questions in 50 different categories. Fortunately, you don't have to get them all right. A score of 35 or over is considered a passing grade here. So good luck, and I'll talk to you again after the test. Hi, I'm Johnny Gilbert. I'll be reading you the questions for the Jeopardy test. As Alex mentioned, there are 50 questions in all. Good luck. Let's get started. The Grammys in 1997. Yeah. The only way to get out of it is pressing escape. That's it for the behind the scenes walkthrough. And I'll see you guys in my next video.